Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel created by Rebecca. In this week's video we're going to be looking at this little packet of goodies from Quartz Creations. Let's get started. So after my last video went up um, I got in contact with Quartz Creations. I left her a very nice review <laughs> on Etsy which is where she sells her handmade watercolours and she actually said she'd watched the video and she'd noticed that she thinks she made a picking error when she actually packed my order uh, I ordered Midnight Violet which when I swatched it said looked an awful lot bluer than I was expecting and she thinks that's because she actually picked the wrong colour she had mine and another colour sat next to each other and she said in the pan they look so similar when they're drying so with her sincerest apologies she has sent me what she knows to be midnight violet and she also asked if I'd be interested in playing with some of her um, granulating colours that she makes and she's got some new ones that she's working on and I said <laughs> yes <laughs> she said there was no expectation of a video for either the replacement colour or the new granulating colours that she's sending me samples of um, and I said well you know my viewers actually said they really enjoyed that video and some even asked if I would do some mixing charts maybe with with her colours so I fully expected there to be a video <laughs> now hands up she sent me this packet a long time ago but what with all the jubilee crown making video stuff the fact that my bonsais have needed a lot of attention if you want to go and look at my gardening channel that is pumpkin becky here on youtube and wow spring is a phenomenally busy time for people who keep bonsai and um, although it's not the only sort of gardening i do that that really is a, a focus in late winter into spring. So I'm afraid this little packet has been sat on my table waiting for me to look at it for several months and my apologies to Quartz Creations for that because that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> this is the little tin I made previously of my Quartz Creations watercolour paints, all handmade aren't they yummy so these were the full sizes that I purchased and then she also gave me some dot cards which <laughs> wowzers they were big dots they're incredible and here is Midnight Violet and I'm going to be really interested to see whether what she's now sent me is anything like that or whether it is much more purpley like I was expecting Here's the little packet. I have opened it already because I'm impatient. She included a lovely collection of different types and weights and textures of watercolour paper, which is really lovely. We have a very fine linen finish. This one looks more like a laid finish. And then we have two quite textured papers here she hasn't unfortunately written on them what they are but you know <laughs> and now it's sweetie time these are not sweeties do not eat them I'm going to guess that this is my midnight violet just because it's very full these samples she has actually sent to me in little palettes so that's lovely Remember these have got a little bit of honey in them so if they have got stuck to the, um, the foil then you can pop them in the fridge for a couple of minutes and that should be enough to set the honey and then they should peel off just fine. Here's the pan that I've just taken out of my little set that she had labelled as Midnight Violet. And here's the new pan of Midnight Violet. They are 
incredibly similar. It's going to be so interesting to find out if this one actually is different. This one might be a tiny bit bluer. It's, it's impossible to to show you. So we're going to have to swatch them both, aren't we? Basically. <laughs> and then let's have a look at what else she sent me. This one is called Mystic. <laughs> Similarly dark, but much more purpley. Let's just hold those two together. Hopefully you are seeing that on camera, but again, once we swatch them, you'll really be able to see the difference. This one's called Lyric. Almost looks like an Indian red. This one has come in a gold 3D printed pan. <laughs> and I thought, oh, purple. Okay. But flip it round and it's dragon's blood purple. Wow. And I can see it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Hopefully you can see that. This is the colour Chartreuse. Wow. <laughs> that looks like that's going to be a gorgeous sage olive green. This one is called Drake. I assume that is to do with the duck rather than the singer but uh, I guess we'll find out when we swatch it. it it looks greenish like a greeny grey maybe with a little bit of blue yeah don't don't know let's get that swatched and find out what that one is I'm gonna quickly wet some stripes with my mop brush I've wet the surface of both pans and you can see here that I'm getting really similar colours coming through, that bronzy colour lifting. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so I've got quite a wet brush. I'm going to dip into that puddle. This is my original, the one I have already swatched. Let's just make that a really nice, decently sized swatch and run it out to very pale. We've got lots of blue granulation coming through there. And then in with the new pan. Ooh. Dried already. It's very hot here at the moment. <laughs> My water had dried already. Oh, oh look, it's the same. I'm pretty sure it is. the same colour isn't it? Now let's have a look at Mystic. This is giving me 
rose of ultramarine vibes just in the pan oh wow 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 look at that that is very intensely pigmented but lovely and transparent at the same time yes oh. wow it's, it's almost ultraviolet it's so vivid And yeah, you can see we've got pinky rosy colours and ultramarine type colours. So it's going to be very interesting to see what pigments she's used in here. Now let's come in with chartreuse. Chartreuse. However you choose to pronounce it. Yeah, sagey green. Yeah, hmm. Khaki, olivey, sagey green. Ooh, that's so transparent. Oh, that's like looking at a woodland in the mist. Now she said she was sending me granulating colours so I think actually I probably need to just come in with a little bit more water. Chartreuse is certainly granulating but Mystic isn't. So let me just add some more water to, to Mystic here down the bottom. Ooh. Ooh, there we go. Do you know that's um, I wonder if that's got opera rose in it something something like that because that's almost fluorescent pink which would make me um, think it's possibly not terribly light fast but I'm gonna have a look at the pigments and just double check that before I make any judgments yeah, I'm getting getting ochres coming out with this chartreuse, almost um, almost indigo and ochre. It's funny. It went down so transparent and simple, and then add more water, and look what happens. Now we're going to move on to lyric. I think this one's making me think of Daniel Smith Mummy Bozite, I think. Lovely granulation. Not seeing necessarily secondary colours in it but let's just add some more water and just see what what it does
Uh, I mean, maybe the, there's a darker pigment settling there. It's going to be interesting to see what the pigments are for this one. Now we're going to look at Drake. This looks like it's going to be the most stunning teal colour. This is just the most stunning ocean colour I think I have ever seen. Oh, look at that. Oh. You could paint just oh, stunning, stunning shoreline paintings with this because you can take it right from deepest, deepest teal through to pale sea foam colour. Ugh. Ugh. Look at that. Gorgeous. Love that. You know that moment when you forget to press record? The last stripe I put down here is Dragon's Blood Purple. And I was just about to say, it, it feels quite gritty. Uh, I remember her saying in the leaflet she gave me in the last video that some of them may feel gritty. This is much more transparent than I was expecting. And it's... Mm. It's like a greyed violet. Super duper granulating. You can see the way it just wants to cling to my brush as I move it but actually not not overly pigmented which is interesting still completely usable Sometimes you get colours and you just think, yeah, I don't know what I could ever use you for. You are maybe for craft projects or something like when you want to put some sparkle on a card and you don't want to use gems or something or glitter card stock. You want to use dabs of watercolour or something. Then, yeah, like the fine tech or those types of of paints those are great for that and I think I thought maybe because that seemed to have flex in it that it was going to be more of a glitter paint but it's not those flex have actually disappeared and we've ended up with a beautifully soft very granulating interesting color it is like a greyed violet, a grey, yeah, or greyed lavender maybe. Anyway, here is a photograph that Katie from Quartz Creations sent me of Midnight Violet and Payne's Blue. 
that's the colour that she thinks she may have sent me originally, this, this one here. But I'm not sure. Midnight Violet on here definitely does look more violet. Payne's Blue hasn't got those redder tones. In the message she says that they're both ultramarine mixed either with raw umber or burnt sienna. So they're going to be very similar. Without the Payne's Blue it's really hard to know. So I think what I'm going to do is now swatch the, it again but on some of the other papers that she's given me. That's a very interesting texture, watercolour paper. Just rolling the brush around, really making sure I'm getting lots of pigment up. And then applying it. So I'm not mucking about here. We are going all in. Okay, I'm going to leave those to dry on their own properly and then we'll do a comparison. Certainly at the moment they look like they're the same colour. But let's give them a chance. I've also just sent a photograph of some of the swatches to Katie at Quartz Creations on Etsy just to see if she can see a difference. So I'm going back to all the colours I've got from Katie at Quartz Creations and I've started there with Peachy and now I'm bringing in Potter's Pink and let's just see what they do in the middle when they mix. I will say this again, Katie's Potter's Pink is lovely, really lovely. Um, I hated trying the Daniel Smith one, I 
hated the Winsor and Newton version. In fact, I can possibly even show you the Daniel Smith one because I happen to have my swatching book here. Look at that, look how I really struggled to even get any pigment out of their potter's paint. This is the Daniel Smith. And look at the difference with Katie's. That was a really fun swatching session, just playing with the colours, putting down fairly big circles of colour and then letting them blend together to see what we get in the middle. Um, I particularly liked the way Peachy and Lyric played together. Dragon's Blood and Mystic was lovely. Indigo and Drake, I think that has to be my favourite. Burnt Sienna Italian and Potter's Pink got a little bit messy but I think I, I prefer it on the burnt sienna side to the potter's pink side Drake just played beautifully with everything midnight violet, chartreuse, cobalt turquoise light and yeah 
but that, that's quickly become one of my favourite colours. Here's a closer look at all the swatches I did today for the new colours. <sighs> What's going on with that Mystic Violet? It's really hard to tell. If the only difference is the colour of brown that's gone into it, then whether it's a sienna or an umber, then possibly, possibly they're different. But they, oh, they look so similar. Some swatches look quite different to each other in person. It'll be interesting to see how it looks on screen when I come to edit. Some where they butt up next to each other and I've tried to make sure some of the browns come through. They look really similar. I'm pretty sure it's the same colour. Which again says to me that initially I was expecting a slightly purplier violet than what we got. It's still beautiful but I don't think we have Payne's blue here. Well that was a bit of a roller coaster and I'm not certain it actually answered anything. <laughs> I'm just more confused. I think the only answer I have is to maybe buy the Payne's blue and find out. <laughs> it was really good fun to do the mixed swatching session though. Just messing about with colours to see what I come up with and really useful to see how they play together. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.